In the 1860s, separated by only about 15 aerial miles from Estes Park, Grand Lake was a many more miles than that difficult trek across massive mountains that would one day make up the majority of Rocky Mountain National Park. Difficult Indian and game trails provided access to Grand Lake from the east. Access from the north, west, and south was also not easy. Intrepid individuals, however, would find a way. Pioneer Joseph Westcott barely survived the brutal Grand Lake winter of 1867. Eating leather and various other parts of clothing and cabin, Westcott made it through. Summer was enjoyable enough for him to decide to stay, becoming Grand Lake's first permanent resident. Grand Lake would host an infiltration of adventure seekers and the population spiked when gold and silver turned up a few miles north along what was then the Grand, later to be renamed the Colorado River. They opened a number of different mines in a different, different communities. The town of Lulu City was named after one of the gold miners' daughters. The problem was that the gold wasn't very good, and they didn't find very much of it. Consequently, no one would come here to stamp it and, and mill the gold from the ore, and they were hauling it by wagon load over the top of the mountain to Georgetown. Well, that wasn't productive because they weren't making any money. They found so little gold, it didn't pay to haul the wagon load of ore over the top of the mountain. So the gold mining era here in the area only lasted from about 1881 to 1889. The heyday was short-lived, and Lulu City was destined to become a ghost town to one day be visited by hikers in a national park. Hikers won't find gold in Lulu City, but they may find treasure. <laughs> 